It's good to have you back on our Arima modeling series. This tutorial is on step two, estimation. But please watch these prerequisite videos before you proceed to watch this one. It is essential that you know the basics of Arima modeling and also know the process of identifying an Arima model. We've taken step one, identification. So this tutorial is strictly on estimation. Recall this correlogram and remember that from there we're able to deduce four tentative models Arima 111, Arima 118, Arima 811, and Arima 818. And I remember saying that uh, I deliberately left out lag 12, even though lag 12 is very significant here, just because I'm trying to create a parsimonious Arima model as much as I can. But I later realized that um, there is a need for me to include it, which was done under diagnostics. However, for now, I will only estimate these four Arima models and from there, we select the most appropriate using some yardsticks I'll show you. So let's go back to e-views and pick up from where we left off. So this is the correlogram I showed you. So the next thing to do is to estimate each of the four tentative models and select the most appropriate. So we go to quick estimate equation. So here you list the variable the way they should be. So what we have on the screen is an ARIMA 111. AR is 1, MA is 1. The method is least squares and in bracket you can see ARIMA here. So this is the method or the estimator of the model. We we'll click OK. So this is the result for ARIMA 111 model. I'm not making any conclusion here until I estimate the other three tentative models. To estimate the second model, we click on estimate. The next model to be estimated is ARIMA 118. That is estimating using eight lags of the moving average. So I change one to eight. Every other thing remains the way they are, I click OK. So you can see here the results for ARIMA 118. Let's estimate the other two tentative models that will make our conclusion. We go back to estimate. The next model to be executed is ARIMA 811. So I'm changing AR, the lags there, from 1 to 8. And I'm changing the one for MA from 8 to 1. So this is an ARIMA 811 structure. I click OK. So here we can see the results for ARIMA 811. The last model to be estimated is ARIMA 818. Click on estimates and we modify MA from 1 lag to 8 lags. So here again is ARIMA 818 structure. We we'll click OK. So now we have estimated the four models. How do we decide the most appropriate? I have moved all these results to PowerPoint with some annotations to make explanations clearer. So here we have the results for the estimated models, ARIMA 111, ARIMA 118, and here we have for ARIMA 811 and ARIMA 818. The criteria for choosing the most appropriate model is very simple. You pick the model that has the most significant coefficients, the model that has the least volatility, the model that has the lowest AKK information criterion, AIC and SIC, and also you choose the model that has the highest adjusted R squared. Let me point out that the sigma squared here represents volatility, the volatility of the variable. And the criteria is that you must choose the model that shows the least volatility for that variable, which makes a lot of sense. Remember the essence of ARIMA principally is to forecast, let's say an economic series, stock prices. So we want to invest in a stock price that is very volatile. So it's always good for you to choose that model that has the least volatility. It increases or makes the predictive power more efficient. Another criteria is that, like I said before, you choose the model that has more significant coefficients, which also makes sense. There is no point in publishing a result where all your coefficients are statistically not significant. The reviewer will tell you, do more, change the variable, or look for better proxies. So make sure that the model you are choosing for ARIMA has some good number of significant coefficients. Akaka information criterion and Schwarz criterion must also be the lowest because we all know that the lower the value of this information criterion, the better the model. So don't choose a model that has the highest AIC 
or SIC. Then lastly, the model you are going to choose must have the highest adjusted R squared. By now you should know that the estimator will penalize you the more you add irrelevant variables to your model. But if by adding some variables to your model improves the adjusted R squared, then that means the model is good because those variables have uh, significant roles they are playing in the model. So the higher the adjusted R squared, it's an indication that this model is better. So having explained that, I've also extracted some of this information in the table. So let's go there. So here is it. This Arima 111, Arima 118, 811 and 818. And the appropriate model should have, like I said, the most significant coefficients. It must have the lowest volatility. It must have the highest adjusted R squared and the lowest AIC and SBIC. From what we can see here, let's take Arima 111. None of the coefficients are significant. For Arima 118, 2, we only have 2 anyway significant that means all the variables that we have put in the model are significant the same thing for arima 811 arima 818 none of the coefficients are significant so that means looking at this we can't even consider arima 111 and arima 818 let's move on to the volatility arima 111 has 1175 118 has 1039 this is 1078 and this is 1137 so again looking at the four models arima 118 has the lowest volatility how about adjusted r squared these are all the adjusted r squared from the four tentative models and from what we can see arima 118 has the highest adjusted R squared. How about AIC? Again, looking at the structure of what we have here, Arima 118 has the lowest AIC. For SBIC, from what you can see, Arima 118 has the lowest SBIC. So from all indication, Arima 118 looks like the most appropriate model. So I'm going to code this in a different color. If you look closely at Arima 811, it's not bad either. So you may decide to put the two of them in your paper and just make some beautiful analysis around them. You may be wondering, what if the AIC and SBIC don't agree? It happens in some cases, whereby, for instance, maybe AIC here is 9.81 and here we have 10.01 for SBIC. I will tell you to go for that model with the lowest AIC. So having identified Arima 118 as the most appropriate Arima model in this case, the next thing to do is to perform some diagnostics to be certain that there is still no information in Arima 118 that is left uncaptured. And how can you know that? You have to plot the correlogram of the residuals. If the correlogram of the residuals indicates that there is still some information left uncaptured, then you have to do that under diagnostics. Let me show you what I mean by that. I'm re-estimating Arima 118 since that is the ideal model. It's all in here. I click OK. So here is the most appropriate model from the four models. And to be sure that there is no information left uncaptured, we go to View, click on Residual Diagnostics, and select Correlogram statistics. I use 24 lags, so I type in 24. At this point, I would say that an ideal correlogram for the residuals should be flat. What do I mean by flat? All the lag structures should lie within the 95% confidence interval or the standard error bounds, as you may want to call it. But from here, we can see that lag 12 is significant. So that means there's an information in this model that is not captured with the omission of the 12th lag. So I'll take this up in my video on that diagnostic. So in conclusion, the fundamental idea of the BJ methodology is that of parsimony. Parsimonious models produce better results than overparameterized models. So do not include a relevant variables in your models. If you have too many variables, degrees of freedom will be consumed, especially when those variables contribute very little to the significance of the dependent variable. Even though having many variables improves the goodness of fit of the model, such a model will be penalized with a reducing adjusted R squared, which if care is not taken, may tilt towards zero or even become negative if there are too many irrelevant variables added to the model. I will reiterate again that fitting an Arima model to a data series is more of an art 
than of science. And you have to master the skill. We all know that two people can look at the same data and they can fit different but almost similar ARIMA model to the data. So I've taken you through identification procedure and we have just concluded estimating the most appropriate ARIMA model. So my next video will be on diagnostics checking. Please don't go away. I'll be right back with that. Please, I will encourage you to read up on these references for you to gain more insights on ARIMA modeling. My videos are just to put you through the hands-on application. So please read up the references as shown on the screen. Thank you for staying with me. Please don't go away. I'll be right back with diagnostics checking.